you and I, Rachel, over the years, have done hundreds of segments together. This may be one of the most important segments we've ever done uh, because our country is at, and the world is at an extremely pivotal point as far as trying to get rid of COVID-19. Let's start with understanding why the vaccines are constructed the way they are. We have a really nice graphic. Before we get to the graphic, I want to explain to you that the two vaccines that have been approved for emergency use authorization in the U.S. are the Pfizer vaccine and the Moderna vaccine. Those two vaccines use the same technology, something called mRNA, which is messenger RNA, which is genetic material. Uh, they do not use the live virus strand. They, they basically take the virus, they duplicate some of the genetic material in the laboratory, and they use that. So let's look at a graphic of why COVID-19 and how it's so infectious. You look here, this is the virus. Those, those maroonish, pinkish things are the spike the crown. proteins. The, crown. the right. crown, yes. They live outside the virus. Those are the things that attach to our cells inside of our body, and they form a doorway into our cells to allow the virus to go into our cells, and then it duplicates and replicates, and it overwhelms our system. And that's why we have a problem with infections, because it gets in there, fast replication, and it overwhelms the body. The vaccines, however, are targeted to try to imitate those spike proteins. So what they do in the laboratory is they take, they create, synthesize genetic material that will create inside your body those same spike proteins. And I have a graphic here that will show you how it happens. So uh, what happens is in the lab, we have this mRNA, which is the blue strand. It goes into the vaccine. It gets injected into the body, okay? It's not live, it's a duplicate. It goes into the cells. Once inside the cells, it creates those spike proteins and the purple you see are the antibodies that are going to fight and block those spike proteins from attaching to our cells. So what happens is with the vaccine is we create these spike proteins, the immune system builds up an immune response, it has a memory. And so if it ever sees real COVID virus. Right, it gets trained right. on the pylons, on the, on the pylons that are harmless to you, it gets trained on them so that you are then not susceptible to that COVID-19, to the corona. So to the infection, the full infection, yes. First of all, you should not, and it's heavily advised not to mix and match the vaccines. You have to stick with the vaccine that you were given. If you're doing Pfizer, your second dose needs to be Pfizer. If you're doing Moderna, same thing. So there is no mixing and matching. That's, that's important, first number of all. Number one. Second, number one. Number two, the idea is you must take both vaccines, uh, both shots, that are typically separated by three to four weeks. And the reason is because even though the first shot will give you some protection, in order to maximize the most protection you can get, you must have both shots, Rachel. This is very key. Now, if you look at the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines that we have in the U.S., they're about 94 to 95% effective. That's really, really high, by the way. If you look at the Oxford vaccine that you mentioned, that's the Oxford AstraZeneca that has not been approved here in the U.S., but is used in Europe and other parts of the world, it's a different vaccine. Let me explain to you without getting too granular why it's different. The Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine uses what's called a viral vector, which means they take a real live virus, they weaken it, it's called the adenovirus, which is what gives us the cold and flu symptoms. It gives right. us this virus. It takes the genetic material of COVID, it puts it inside of the genetic material of the adenovirus and it's DNA, not RNA. So it takes it and then it injects it into us. And what happens is the virus, the adenovirus that's carrying the spike protein material, that then creates the spike proteins. And as you saw in the graphic earlier, then the body builds a response. So builds basically a, it's a different- immune response. That's right. right. But here's the other thing. They tend to be cheaper. Those shots are cheaper. Also, it's more durable, as you mentioned, which means that it's not as fragile. So you can keep it at temperatures that don't have to be freezing like we do with the two vaccines we currently right. have. So you can put it in the refrigerator at 38 degrees and it could be okay. So it's more durable, less expensive, but here's the big difference. It's not as effective. Remember, the two vaccines we have are 94 to 95% effective, whereas the AstraZeneca vaccine is between 60 and 90% effective. So it's about 70, 75% effective.